And what would you say are like, you know, one or two key things you said to live skillfully, mm. you know, one or two key things that people and your experience through walking your own path, mm. one or two things you feel people could really uh, benefit from in yes. terms of living a better life. So fundamentally, we're having a pleasant experience when the body and mind are comfortable. An unpleasant experience when the body and mind are uncomfortable. So the whole process is to have a comfortable body and mind, to put it very, very simply. Mm. So now we ask ourselves, how can we be more comfortable in our body, more comfortable in our mind? Um, and this word comfort, you know, it's something that seems to be misunderstood. And this is something I care deeply about. Um, I was at least taught from a very young age, the whole point of life is to be comfortable, you know, so you study hard, so you get that comfortable job, you know, in that comfortable house, in that, in that comfortable car, and a comfortable sofa, so you can be comfortable. So imagine that, you know, a circle is our comfort zone, you know, whatever is inside that circle we're comfortable with, and outside we're uncomfortable with. And there's this direction of going towards the middle of the circle, that's where you know, that's a sweet spot, the indulgences, you know, the comfort right. foods, you know, that, that big sofa with that Netflix series that you love so much, that's right in the middle of the circle. We're very comfortable there. And the danger there is the comfort trap is if you hang out there too much, there's a law of nature. If you don't use it, you lose it. So the boundary of the comfort zone becomes smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until we get trapped in our own comfort. And I see a lot of people who are trapped in that way. I've worked with top-level executives, industrials, and so on. Yet they're trapped in their body. The body can barely move because too much comfort, not enough movement. But even teenagers, you know, too much in this, but the body's kind of trapped. Um, similarly with the mind. If, if you are always with the same peop, kind of people, the same kind of ideas, they look like you, they talk like you, they think like you, they act like you, you get comfortable with that kind of people, everything else becomes uncomfortable. You know, so to the point where you can actually be in that lazy boy watching your favorite show and you're still uncomfortable. You can be in that paradise with the palm trees and the luxury retreat and the mind is creating a havoc, you're uncomfortable. So what if comfort is not about going towards the center but more about making that comfort zone bigger and bigger and bigger so you're comfortable with more and more and more. So no matter what's happening, you're comfortable, you're having a pleasant life experience. So this is one framework I care about. So becoming Comfortably uncomfortable. You got it. So there is, a, there is a very important point here, which is the boundary of the comfort zone. So but whenever we do yoga, for example, we go through a boundary of the comfort zone. Not too much. You've got to respect the boundary. Yet you explore it. And there's a way to explore it. It's not a bravado, look, I'm a big hero thing. It's done with a lot of innocence, curiosity, patience, persistence. You explore, explore, explore. When I first started doing yoga, man, I was, I was like this. You know? And I saw my teacher you know, sitting in the lotus pose. I'm like, wow, not in this lifetime. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but it so happens that as you explore, you become more comfortable, more comfortable. And then your body has a lot more range of movement. In yoga, you move your body in every conceivable way. So now, if I'm in a, in a mud hut in Calcutta, I'm comfortable. If I'm in a presidential meeting in a global summit with leaders and presidents, I'm comfortable. So no matter what's happening, I'm comfortable. And that's the thing, you know, mentally as well. When I sit in meditation, I'm exploring and all these thoughts and emotions coming and going, and I'm sitting with it. I'm holding the space for them to come and go. I'm comfortable, no matter what thoughts and emotions come and go. That's the formal practice. So when life jams up and people behave in unwanted ways or unwanted situations happen, can you still be comfortable? Now that's skillful living. I mean, very well said. I, I think that uh, so many of us are susceptible to mm. the external reality influencing us mm. and determining and dictating how we feel, mm. but not being able to cultivate within ourselves that, that comfort mm. and that power to be able to almost resist what's going on out there, to always have, I think T.S. Eliot called it the inner Tahiti, mm -hmm. this place within ourselves, this, this blissful place, this, this comfort zone. But you still can be in an uncomfortable situation, mm. but be in a state of comfort within. I you think that's, that's you what you're talking about, right? Yes. So uh, if you have to really recognize that the center of that comfort zone is a very dangerous place. You know, if you live there, all the biggest diseases in society, by and large, is because we're too comfortable. You know, too much sugar, too much fatty food, you know, 
uh, too much junk food or too much, you know, indulgence of emotions like anger, frustration, guilt, you know. If a house is on fire, there's no time for depression. You know, you, you have to move. You have to be active. I very often go into organizations and, heavens forbid, if something happened, most of the people won't be able to run even 100 meters or, or, or jump. You know, things are going to fall apart. <laughs> Too comfortable. So, I, I very, with a lot, lot of love and respect, I invite people to live on the boundary of the comfort zone, to keep exploring formal practice and informal practice. So, formal practice might be, Say you're comfortable waking up at 7 a.m., okay? So that's your comfort zone. Try 6.50. 5 a.m. might be too much. It's too far away. You've not respected your boundaries. But 6.50, that's possible. You just bought yourself 10 precious minutes. Now let's use them wisely. That, that's exploring the comfort zone. Another one is, you know, maybe you love taking warm showers. Cool, you know? Just switch it to the cold for five seconds and just hang out with that discomfort. And see how that, you know, and sort of hold the presence. Maybe 15 seconds, 20 seconds, you can play with that. So keep exploring in curiosity and in innocence, you know, what is this thing that disturbs me? Meditation, if it's difficult, try five minutes, sit still and see what happens. Okay, cool, now try 10 minutes. So that's the way, you know, if you don't like to move so much, okay, that's cool. Try 10 burpees, give it a go, see what happens. Just start somewhere and just keep exploring, exploring, and that's where mastery is. Masters are just people who have explored their boundaries and become comfortable with what anybody else would call uncomfortable. So, uh, and to your point, there is an inner Tahiti, you know, there is a place of pure presence. And that's the beauty of the comfort zone. In the boundary of the comfort zone where you're hanging out, it's pure presence. It's pure consciousness. You're fully there. You're fully alive. And here's the thing, pure presence feels really good. You know, so that's the inner Tahiti, to be totally present. Um, and that's why games like extreme sports and some computer games and even golf, they're so addictive because presence is addictive. You have to be very present with these things. Absolutely. I mean, I've seen in my own life that the, the comfort zone is something that can essentially ruin your whole life mm. and really not enable you to tap into your potential. Mm. I think, you know, our bodies are wired for survival. And I think the path of least resistance moving towards the middle of that mm -hmm. comfort zone mm -hmm. is, is natural in one way, mm -hmm. right? Because if you're comfortable, then you're safe. If you're safe, you see the next day. But the thing is, you might see the next day, but you might not be fulfilled in mm -hmm. your life. Mm -hmm. So one part of you might be comfortable, but another part of you, the spiritual part of you, the part of you that wants to live and grow, mm -hmm. that's the part that starts to die on the inside. Yes, that's, that's subtle. And also at a very gross level, as you go towards the center, you lose your faculties. You know, and this is a very severe thing. Like, you know, the, the smartphones and things like that, they have made life comfortable. But we've lost the ability to remember even phone numbers, for example. You know, we had that ability growing up, at least people of my age, you know. But after a while, because it becomes so easy, or to do simple arithmetic in your mind, we were able to do that as children. We're losing that ability. Uh, emotionally as well, you know, you, you become isolated in this one, you know, virtual reality thing, but the, the ability to communicate, the ability to really speak in a, in a way that's authentic and connect empathetically, the humanness, we lose those abilities because getting too comfortable with things. So, uh, to the global aspect as well, I've been privileged to speak at the, the UN Climate Change Conference a couple of years ago, and this is, was version number 22. You know, there's 22 years, nothing much has happened, you know, and you see the people who are making decisions with respect, they're too comfortable. The change becomes too uncomfortable. And I think it's fair to say that we can't go on like this. It has been very clearly documented, you know, if, for example, if mammals become extinct, you know, which seems to be the case, the delicate balance of the ecosystem goes haywire, we're going to get uncomfortable. If the climate change really becomes exponential and uncontrollable in about 12 years or even seven years, we're going to get uncomfortable, you know? If, uh, you know, the, the pollution in the planet is, becomes exponential as it is, we're going to get uncomfortable. So uh, it becomes very important for us to, to embrace our zone of comfort, even for very practical reason. But also, here's the thing about having a bigger and bigger comfort zone. As we become comfortable more and more, a beautiful thing starts to happen is that we become more fearless because nothing bothers you so much because you're more comfortable. And a lot of the, of the disease and mess in society is because we've become very fearful. 
things outside the comfort zone become fearful. People who look different, talk different, think different, act different, speak different, suddenly they become dangerous. You know, to hold space for somebody who doesn't agree with you becomes difficult. Uh, to move in a way you're not accustomed to becomes difficult. So we are in a comfort crisis right now. Too much comfort and we've lost our facilities. Even our grandfathers, great grandfathers, they had to walk, they had to till the soil, they had to climb, they had to use their bodies, they had faculty, they had intelligence in their body. We're losing all of that. Uh, and, uh, and the only way out, luckily there is a way out, is to just hang out, hang out in the boundaries of the comfort zone. Just keep hanging out there. I'm not saying don't go to the center now and again, totally cool, have fun, enjoy yourself. Life is about having fun and relaxing and so on. Just don't live there, you know? Living there uh, has a quicksand effect. You get sucked into it and you get st stuck in your own comfort. 100%, I mean, I, I try and live on the edges of that. I'm always trying mm -hmm. to push and expand myself, but I've had moments in my life where I've, parts of me in different domains have you know, been drawn towards the middle. And uh, while at first glance it seems to be a good thing, never ends up being a good thing. Mm -hmm. But the funny thing with life is, speaking about the comfort zone and these boundaries, life seems to want to push us out of our comfort zone. There's oh, always a yeah. curveball going on. Mm -hmm. I remember I heard somewhere that you're either in a crisis, getting out of a crisis, or going into a crisis. <laughs> and I think this is almost the innate intelligence of life saying, hey, listen, the comfort zone is not where you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be challenged. And it's a reminder to us. And I think uh, as tragic as everything is going on around us with the environment and all of the challenges, uh, you know, politically and, and socially, whatnot, I mean, all of these are pushing us out of our comfort zone to, mm -hmm. you know, help us uh, find solutions and tap into our creativity. So I always think, while at first glance it seems like chaos, that it actually might be a great gift if we choose to tap into that energy and actually connect to it versus just let it kind of mm. like a tidal wave take us over. You know, I think yeah. it's an opportunity. Mm. What do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. Well, I mentioned there's a formal practice of meditation, yoga, or you know, if you don't eat any fruits and vegetables, eat one carrot, have one banana, you know, the, the, that's the formal practice. And then there's informal practice, which is life, which you're pointing to, you know? Because life is going to give us plenty of opportunities to practice, you know, developing a comfort zone. So what was once uncomfortable and unpleasant and you want to avoid it suddenly becomes an opportunity. Okay, cool. Can I hold my presence with even this, you know? Now I have three children. <laughs> They're not always behaving the way I expect them to. Can I hold my space with that? Uh, it becomes an opportunity to practice. Getting cut off in traffic. Okay, cool. You know? Do I need to lose my cool or can I, can I hold the space? So things that were previously jamming us up, now suddenly we get to Tai Chi it and use that as an opportunity to broaden the comfort zone. So again, a peculiar thing starts to happen. Nothing bothers you because everything now becomes an opportunity to step into that unknown. Who am I in that space? You know, what's arising inside me? And uh, to the point where you can almost see that when somebody has a huge comfort zone and they are not bothered by anything there is no horse in the race nothing to sell promote or defend nothing like that this is what I would call a mystic you know a mystic in all traditions and cultures is somebody who's just can hold the presence no matter what's arising uh, because they're comfortable so so this is the practice you 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 embrace the uncertainty with a lot of respect with a lot of kindness gently gently expand 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 uh, until you're comfortable more and more. And, and I often make the joke that uh, my job essentially is to make comfortable people uncomfortable and uncomfortable people comfortable, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, uh, so, that's, so that's the process, you know? Um, yeah, 